What's up guys, welcome back, this is SugarJRPG here and today I'm gonna be doing a review on Digimon Survive. Now this will be mostly spoiler free review so I will be only focusing on a bit of the premise of the actual story. Now when it comes to Digimon games in general, they always had a bit of a rough time compared to Pokemon for example which always enjoyed good sales and ratings for their mainline games, while as Digimon games kinda were always these imperfect experiences where they did graphics for example really well but there were other elements like gameplay design or they failed on execution so we never really had this sort of a perfect Digimon game and the closest we got was probably on PlayStation 1 with Digimon World which probably a lot of people would agree with me being the best Digimon game and sadly when they started to do sequels of that they kind of departed way too much out of the original and all the things that made the original really good and maybe one day they will realize to actually remake that game in modern graphics or do some HD texture version and add some like modern new features like saving elements and new Digimons and etc. But whatever, now we're going to be talking about Digimon Survive which when it was initially announced and revealed there was a lot of hype around this game and promised that this would take the Digimon gaming franchise back to its like you know high times again. So let's see whatever it actually lived up to the hype. So what you need to first understand about this game, which you might have lost with the marketing of the game, which has been perhaps been misleading. So this is definitely majority visual novel game with tactics battle elements. So some people probably thought that this was going to be majorly tactics battle or 50-50, but it's more like 70-30 with 70 being more a visual novel. Although in the game when you get to these exploration phases, you get to visit these battle arenas where you can have more and many free battles as you actually want. So depending on how do you play the game, if you want to do a lot of like side battles, then yes, there's actually quite a lot of battling to do. But when you actually just look at the main game itself and the, all the mandatory stuff you do, it's definitely going to be more of a visual novel experience. So that's something that you definitely want to understand about the game before buying it. Also, I do kind of agree with a lot of the people who have been critical about this visual novel experience uh, of this game and I wish it would have been perhaps more like Fire Emblem Three Houses where all of that interaction with characters would be secondary to the actual battles or at least be 50-50 but if this was actually like more about tactics less about visual novel I definitely would have enjoyed this game a lot more. So let's kind of touch upon a bit about the story and the premise of it what actually is happening here. So it's kind of like a real do of the original Digimon adventure anime that we all have seen probably and love if you are treat Digimon fans and a lot of the characters you know are like similar that we see for example the main character Takuma being like Taichi, Shuji being like Joe and Kaido being like Yamado so a lot of these are like copy pasted characters from the original anime and more or less so, but obviously there's a couple of characters which kind of deviate from the normal uh, generic Digimon characters, but obviously I haven't seen all the anime, so maybe they have been copied off from them others as well, who knows, but they're not exactly like these very versed and flushed out characters which have multiple dimensions to them, they are kind of like straightforward and have one element that kind of dictate their whole personality. And basically the kids go camping and then suddenly they actually travel in to the Digimon world and obviously they're very freaked out what's going on, what are these Digimons, you know, and what are these partners that have suddenly appeared in front of us and they are kind of like, you know, uh, lost in the Digimon world and they are kind of like lost from each other from the main, the main cast which are gradually introduced as you progress throughout the game. And obviously you get to like as the title of the goes, Digimon survives. So surviving is a big element of the game and actually some of the characters can actually die in the game. Obviously I'm not going to be revealing anything else about that, but that's kind of like one of the main themes about it. So it's kind of darker type of a Digimon game in a way. Not to say that there hasn't been like Digimon games or you know anime that haven't touched upon some dark elements. They definitely have, especially Digimon Adventure 02, which definitely did that. But fundamentally like the story is not something like superbly interesting or um, you know, ground breaking or super mature like the characters are still children or teenagers which two teenager thinks now i haven't really played any visual novels outside from some very old flash games back in newsgrounds which were more probably like some dating simulators so i can't really like 
contrast the, sim the visual novel experience of this game to my other experiences that I have because I have really none. But I kind of felt like these visual novel menus and like how you interact with the actual screen, I felt that it was kind of clunky the way it, you were able to like use your mouse for example or you could use your controller to move the thing around and talk to people or inspect type of things. But you know, I'm a big fan of point and click adventure games and they could have in integrated that in there instead. So you could like, you know, search some clues or do some puzzles. That's something of an element I would have enjoyed a lot more than visual novel. And all the things about visual novel in general, it always requires a good of a story. And Digimon never was, I would not argue that Digimon was ever like a franchise that was always known for its excellent storytelling or something like that. So combining visual novel with tactics is not a bad thing but combining visual novel with Digimon sounds a bit of a, like a weird plan in the first place and maybe the story loses a bit of things in translation obviously and I could definitely see that because there's obviously Japanese dub by the way there is no English dub and but you can you know enjoy it from a text-based experience and you know in general visual novels are not translated into English in the first place so I don't think that's an expectation now let's talk about the tactics elements of the game which is actually rather solid, but it lacks some complexity. So you kind of have average things like attacking from side, abilities that go like multiple hexes on the map, and then you have high ground and flying units, but it could have like used things like high ground, which could have given more evasive bonuses, abilities that shove you or move characters from one tile to another more, and just like things that make the thing more dynamic, like in Fire Emblem you have, you know, certain types of like barricades and different things which you can interact with, which can change the map in certain ways. I mean, you had treasure chests which you could basically destroy, which would give you items that you could equip, or they would be training items which could increase the stats of the actual Digimons. So actual the training and the evolution elements of this thing and the general combat is actually not too bad. It's actually pretty good. It's just that the battles are maybe also a bit short. I think they could have been longer given to the fact that how long the visual novel segments were, which were also kind of like, well, let's get, get into that in a second. But fun fundamentally, the battle was not actually too bad. And definitely they could use that same best and improve it a lot if in case they want to be doing Digimon Survive 2. Now, um, then you can also have these sort of persona elements here where you can capture the Digimons in these free battles by talking to them and getting the answers right and the then they can, uh, by a chance, join you or you can ask them for an item. And that's actually like a cool element they added into that game. And I just generally like the combat. It gets, you know, gradually a bit harder. And you can get to have your own composition of like three Digimons. And obviously the Digimons that are holded by the main characters. And sometimes you have to force to field certain Digimons in the battle. But I, I like the evolution elements and everything around it. So the combat was actually pretty good. It just lacked a bit of that complexity that it could have gotten. Now, in terms of dialogue. Um... I, I'm a bit annoyed by it because it had too much like repetitive elements like for a game that is quite long a lot of the dialogue just felt repetitive they, they were saying things same things over and over again and things that really didn't play that much to the story like they okay we're afraid we're afraid I get that you already said that a million times right so so I felt like there was too much repetition in that dialogue and I also felt that the characters were also repeating themselves most obnoxious characters being Kaido and Shuji Kaido being the character like always you know getting uh, angry and throwing tantrums all the time and Shuji also like you know raging all the time and I was getting really tired of that over and over the time as I was playing throughout this game so um, th that was kind of annoying and also some of the characters were kind of predictable and what their role exactly would be like the professor for example I kind of were knowing from the very get-go what his role would be in the story for example so I felt like you know maybe things get lost in the translation the maturity for example that is not totally unheard of with English dubs in general but fundamentally like the story could have used a lot more secretive elements and mystery and obviously there are elements of the dialogue which can differ based on which type of route you are taking place in the story since there are multiple endings now in order to get the true ending you have to play the game through once and then you can basically access the true ending and there's actually some warranty for doing you know the new game plus since you're gonna be 
um, well, preventing the deaths of a couple of characters in the game, which means that uh, the ending is going to be different, there's going to be different battles and different dialogues and different types of stuff. So there, if you enjoy the experience, you're definitely going to be playing the new game plus, and obviously if you don't want to see the dialogues again, you can do a lot of skipping through very, very much. But fundamentally, like, I thought it was, you know, um, pretty good. Um, I mean, the, the idea of having multiple endings is very visual novel type of stuff. But choosing the other endings also will lead into a shorter game, FYI. So I think the moral ending, if you go with that, that's going to be the longest one. Uh, going through 12 chapters, while as the other ones are going to be going to 10 chapters, outside from obviously the true ending. Now, one of the other issues that I had with the game was the soundtrack. It's very short soundtrack, like 25 tracks, which like six or seven of them are battle. So when you are actually in these visual novel segments, you're always having this dark and gloomy track playing around, which was really tiring after a point. And, you know, I was maybe going a bit of a like a depressive mood when I started the game, you know, back in the release date. So that also kind of like fixed up a bit of my mentality about the game but I felt like the atmosphere could have used a lot more upbeat tracks and I, I do like the the ending song which with the um, you know the lyrics that was amazing and the main theme is great and it has a couple of okay tracks but it's like the repetition for example the original Digimon World game had like 61 track D Digimon World 2 had like uh, 36 tracks 25 tracks is a very very a low amount which most of them are same variations so it kind of got uh, a bit repetitive after a while like hearing the same sounds over and over again and some of the sound designs were really annoying especially once when they're jumping on the cliffs <laughs> yeah it's, it's it's not good guys uh, and, and 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 like I was really annoyed but uh, the voice um, you know actors obviously heard these guys million times before because they always recycle the same voice actors to these companies sadly but you know the voice actors did their job and they were convincing and that was okay and not all the scenes are by the way voiced some of them are like you know and the, the very main 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 uh, story stuff is but not all of the main story is actually voiced FYI so overall, it's not a horrible game. It does things really well. I just hope that they had a bigger budget on it. And it could have been a 2D game where you could have like explore, you know, explored the map as a sprite or something instead of like a visual novel interface. You could have had the visual novel too, but like the exploration of the world is kind of cool thing about like Digimon World, for example. And it just wasn't able to like a couple of like backgrounds of like, you know, woods or something. It's not going to be creating that immersion. So there are some problems there when you try to like build out this world, especially when you're going to be using the same screenshots of backgrounds of woods over and over again. And like they revisit a lot of these same locations in the game over and over again. So fundamentally, like in terms of immersion, it didn't really have that for me uh, fundamentally. But I mean, it's an okay game. If you can get through the visual novel stuff, it can be a pretty okay experience. And it's definitely probably is still among Digimon games, uh, one of the better ones. Now, my playthrough lasted for 25 hours, roughly. And um, I did a lot of the side missions and obviously I went through the Moral Road, which is actually the longest one. And so maybe the fastest run through is going to be 20 hours, depending on how fast your text speed is and the battle settings, which you can also adjust. So there's a lot of adjustments here to make text speed faster, make the battles faster and things like that. So there are some level of customization here. And I also do want to say that the FPS looked really, really bad on the Switch version and the other versions. So it seems like the PC version is a lot, running a lot more better, which is really weird because it's 2D art from the fundamental point of view, so why, why it has such a frame issues on Switch, for example. But, you know, Digimon World, uh, sorry, Digimon Survive was a solid game. I definitely hope that they're going to be doing Digimon Survive 2, and they're going to be putting a bit more money into it, B bigger soundtrack, and a bit or more, perhaps, like, 3D elements there, like a bit of world map or something like that we can explore and enjoy. And it doesn't have the dialogue can be still through a visual novel. That's fine, but I still feel like there could be more tangible moving around and you know things like that would would made the game feel a bit more interactive since this is still like a Digimon world and we want to touch it, we want to feel it, you know. But um, that's kind of my take on it. If you have any questions, leave them down below, or if you need some um, you know answers because there's you know there's ways to like have different endings and etc. But um, thanks for watching. I will be seeing you in the next review. Cheers.